It's getting warmer on the Grand Trunk Western Holly subdivision, while Mr. Harrison has arrived to the Pontiac Roundhouse with a rather large and special package to show the locomotives to. Well, Benjins, I got some big news for y'all. Yeah, what is it? And does it have to do with that giant crate next to you? Well, yes. So as I was saying, CN is currently testing some automatic defect detector technology and they have sent us a few test examples to run on the Holly sub since they already installed a few, you know, examples on the Flint sub because they seem successful on there. So they decided to send me a couple of to test on the Holly sub as you may see. And if it turns out successful, then that means CN will install more and more of them throughout the line and that pretty much means eventually there will be no more cabooses. Well, that's great to hear, even though I kind of like the nostalgia of pulling a caboose behind my excursions, though. Yeah, same. Even though they were a pain to pull sometimes, I had to have someone yelling across as well. Yeah, yeah, I agree too. But what is this defect detector even going to do anyway? Talk to us through the radio? Well, yep, exactly. After your entire train passes over it, over the radio, the detector will read out you know, the railroad that you're on, location by milepost, whether if there's any defects, the total amount of axles on the train, the length of the train, the sp and the speed of the train, all right over by a Texas speech voice. It's kinda cool if you ask me. Oh, I see. But it better not bicker me out and call me fat, or else I'm gonna pull a caboose over it and make it wag out all the hell. It might as well. And I hope that doesn't have a voice as loud and annoying as yours, you comic the large green Snickers bar. Oh, as if I look like this. Oh, knock it off, you two. And to answer that question, the detector will not call anyone names, and the voice of it is pretty bearable, I'd have to say. And if you guys excuse me, I gotta hurry up and go ahead and install it further down the line. And I'm g and it's gonna probably gonna take me a while, so y'all behave, alright? Okay, then. Okay, now to load these up. All right, we should be good to go. All righty, this seems like a good place for him. Now, time to read the instructions and see if I can install them. <laughs> I think I did it right. Now to really test that out, let me go ahead, go to the relay box, and let it read through everything it could say. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, north, south, east, west, right, left, side, middle, back, near, total axle, dragging equipment, wide, high, shifted, load, hot box, system working, train, Speed, slow train, file post, main point, no defects, detector, rebroadcast, ambient temperature, minus degree, cars, length, feet, out, A, D, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, F, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, hot wheel, failure, axle, power inspect, malfunction, more, length of train, from, to, count, end of check train, end of transmission, car, equipment defect detector, 19 foot 2, car detected. Okay, seems to be working right. Now, let, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and see the real test ensues by going back to the roundhouse and have some locomotive run a test train over it and see, you know, how it does. All of a sudden, the wind started picking up so strongly on the mountains where I was watching my two Canadian Pacific SD40 friends in that coltrane that they were pulling. 
Yeah, and then the wind start, picked up so strong that they all toppled over and started violently rolling down the mountains. And yes, I witnessed it all from a different distance. And so shortly after all that was over, those two locomotives were deemed a total loss. And so, that's the story of how I'm afraid of heights. Well, Dame Barry, I never thought you would be so nice and bored to the point where you would start telling us stories of your ragged dragon past. Yeah, yeah, it's whatever. Well, guys, sorry I was gone for a while. I was just trying to figure out this defect detector stuff out since I'm not really familiar with it. But yeah, I have came back to tell you guys that I successfully installed the first pair of defect detectors over by Opdyke Road ever on the Canadian National Holly sub as of today. And so far, I think they're turning out pretty great. Well, that's great to hear. I was kind of getting bored of old Barry stories over here. Oh, shut up! <laughs> well, I see. But yeah, I also came back to say that Tom, I also need I need you to take those box cars over there and run a test train over those defect detectors on Opdyke Road just to make sure that they're working correctly. And if they are by chance, could you also drop those box cars off by the Detroit area as well since you know they uh uh, need some box cars for some switching jobs over there that's gonna go on later so yeah think you can do that sure can hopefully there's no foaming going around today speaking of yeah i agree um there's no i don't think there's really any foaming going around today as far as i know maybe there will be actual good rail fans around silently filming their little documentaries on them goofy looking vhs cameras but yeah so when you whenever you come back tell me if the detectors read you out correctly all right yep i will Okay, here we go. Detector, milepost 148.0, main 2, no defects, repeat, no defects, total axle 3, 2, length of train 4, 2, 3, train speed 2, 1, M-P-H, detector, out. Oh, that's so cool! It even read the track that I was on. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and drop off these boxcars near the Detroit area and roll over the other detector that's on the other track. Okay, just to go forward a little more... Okay, that should be it. Now to decouple and head back. Okay, now to see how this other de detector reads me out. Detector, milepost 148.0, main 1, critical, alarm, hotbox, south, rail, axle 8, critical, alarm, hotbox, south, rail, Axel 8, detector, out. What? Hot box? Oh, bull. I don't even have any cars behind me. Like, there isn't even an Axel 8 on my train. And, and I can tell you what, my axles feels nice and cold today. But yeah, I gotta, looks like I gotta tell old Harrison about that.
Hey, Mr. Harrison, I'm back. And while I was doing, you know, my little test train job, the weirdest thing just happened. The first time when I was pulling those box cars over to de the detector, the detector worked just fine. And then when I was heading back, I somehow tripped a hotbox alarm, even though I wasn't even pulling any cars behind me. Hmm, yeah, that is a bit weird, but then again, they are brand new and still need some proper adjusting. But yeah, it's not the too big of a deal as long there isn't an actual hotbox. And as of right now, the detector audio is only linked privately to my portable radio, my office radio, and your guys' radios on, you know, an undisclosed channel. Oh, okay, I gotcha. <sighs> I was getting a little worried there for a second. <laughs> GTW buddies having fun. Yeah, it's okay. It's just pulling a freaking mainland freight. There's nothing that fun about this. Yeah, well, it's fun to me. Like, sometimes I get pretty tired over sitting on that old crusty spur over there. But now I'm rocking and rolling with you, bud. <sighs> Detector, milepost 148.0, main 1, critical, alarm, hotbox, north, rail, axle 5, 5, critical, alarm, hotbox, south, rail, axle 5, 5, detector, out. Uh, what was that? Dude, that was Mr. Harrison's defect detectors that he just installed. And we just tripped a hotbox alarm. Stop the train now! Okay, okay, as you insist. Hey driver, check and see if any of our and the train's car's axles are either with no oil or just abnormally hot. Uh, alrighty then. Well, I just checked each axle, and none of them are extremely hot, and they're also all properly lubricated. Oh, so what? Does that mean that it was just a false alarm? Yeah, apparently. But then again, you did say that those are some new detectors, so maybe they're still being broken in or something. Oh, okay then. So, can I go now? Yeah, sorry about that, man. It was all apparently just a false alarm. Okay then. Hmm, another hot box alarm, huh? Well, this is getting really weird. I might have messed something up in the in installation or something. Alright, now since we're done picking up some bozos from here, we can now freaking proceed! You don't have to be so darn negative there. What was that, you bright orange bastard? Nothing. Jeez. Yeah, that's what I thought. Detector, milepost 148.0, main 2, train too slow, detector out. What the, train too slow? What the hell are they talking about? Yeah, I know, we're 
after all going at a rather solid speed of 40 miles per hour. I wasn't asking you, cue ball. Hey, stop calling me that. Heh, <laughs> like I'm just gonna call you J-Ball then. Like, what a stupid nickname that is. God help me. And that's why I absolutely hate Courage to Cowardly Dog. Like, that show is so darn weird. Like, it makes you, like, it makes you and anyone else who's watching it feel like they're on an acid trip in some scenes. Yeah, I can't blame you there. And to speak of things that are actually good, have you ever listened to ACDC? Oh, ACDC? Oh yeah, I have. I think they're pretty cool. What about them? Well, I am a huge fan of ACDC. And my favorite singers are Bon Scott and Brian Johnson, even though Johnson took over ACDC after Bon died back in 1980. Ah, oh, I see. And about them, my favorite song is... It's probably It's a Long Way to the Top, because of the rather unique addition to, of bagpipes in it. And plus, it's just really catchy overall. Yeah, that song is pretty sweet. But my favorite song has to be TNT. It has a rather hard rock vibe to it. And it's so also pretty popular. Not trying to break the fourth wall, but I will show you, but the owner of the series can't play it since it's, a, it's copyrighted. Oh, okay, I see, I see. Oh, hey, Sammy, what are you doing here? Well, have any of you guys heard that the new defect header Mr. Harrison installed is constantly malfunctioning? Well, uh, no, I haven't because I turned off my radio since I wanted a rather peaceful day off without Billy bugging me all day, and I also wanted to hang out with my buddy Andrew over here. Yeah, and for me, my radio is not on the same channel as yours. Oh, that's right. And Bobby, what the hell are you thinking? Mr. Harrison strictly said to keep your radio on at all times. Are you out of your mind? Well, I'm sorry. I just forgot and didn't think much of it. Ah, oh, well, it's whatever. The main concern here is that Mr. Harrison has a faulty defect header It's going all batshit crazy. And it's basically wreaking havoc on the line. And he's d doing nothing about it. So I decided to come over here and see if any of y'all wanted to go over to him and tell him to take it down. Or else something really bad might happen. Yeah, I'm with ya. And I would be in the plane as well, but thing is though, I'm not allowed to leave the yard unless it's for a job. Like... Yeah, our yard master is pretty darn strict, if you ask me. Well, dang. I'm gonna need more locomotives that. Well, how convenient. Yeah, yeah, I overheard your plan after I got done doing my job, and I was gonna come here alone, but old Q-Ball over here insisted upon taking him with me. Yeah, so I can show the others how you treat me. Oh, whatever! Yeah, Jimmy, this comically large watermelon does this crap to everyone, even me, so I'd say don't worry about it. But anyways, now since you guys are here, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna couple up- Couple up? Ew, I don't wanna hold Bob's coupler. Hey, I don't need you acting like Billy over here. We are going to do this plan whether you like it or not. Uh, fine. As I was saying, then we're going to go to Mr. Harrison and tell him all together at once to take down those defect checkers because they're really doing no good for us at this point. You guys got that? Yep, I got it. Same here. <sighs> I guess. Alright, great. Let's do this. That was a bit rough, but let's go. <sighs> now, what was I gonna do? I forgot. Well, looks like I gotta go back. Huh?
What in the hell? Mr. Harrison, you really need to take those defect headers down right now. Yeah, you really need to. Yeah, or else old Q-Ball is gonna sell himself somewhere else. I swear to God, baby. But yeah, can you take those down or at least fix them? <sighs> oh, well, fine. I guess I'll take them down if they're really causing that m many problems on the railroad. But remember, y'all, we're gonna go have have to go back to cabooses after this like geez and plus it's just a uh, look man i'm it's partially my fault i didn't even know what the hell i was doing anyway because i'm not familiar at all with these defect detectors so uh after all i guess the railroad is not really ready for them so i guess i'll just hop in my rental box truck and take them down myself so see you guys then Time to take these darn things down. Alrighty, they're gone. And, uh, moral of the story here is, don't always do what others do. And always stick to trial and error if you are. Like, just keep trying, and, uh, if you feel like you don't do something right, if you're not doing something right, then always stick to that feeling, because, yeah, I really felt that in this time. And just... Do your stuff in your at your own risk, in general. Yeah, now I gotta, you know, contact CN again and tell them about this situation. Man. Well, this was just stupid. This idea was completely ripped off of Atlantic Coast Railfaner's older series, Southeast Rail Stories. How about do better when it comes to episode ideas, you bozo? Look, man, I'm doing my best over here, all right? And plus, I got an approval from that person to make this episode happen, so why not you go back to your friggin' shed, you big green watermelon? Urgh, fine! <laughs>